chapters in this book, which is entitled The Conscious Home Environment. This chapter dedicates itself to bringing out parallels between a conscious home environment and a merely good home environment. And some will probably question, well, what is the difference between the two? A good home can be a conscious home, a conscious home is usually a good home. I would beg to differ if that's not the case. Many of us know what it's like to come up in a good home environment. An environment to which there are no needs for anything material. You have a roof over your head, you're eating three square meals a day, you're probably being dropped off and picked up from school and a pretty nice vehicle. You come home to two parents every day. You have a computer in the room and HD television, so what else could you possibly want? Well, that's a good home environment. An environment where Children are given every material need, and every material need that a child has or desires is truly fair. That's a good home. That's a very good home. And I'm fortunate to have been a product of such a home. But there is a contrast to that. There is a conscious home environment. Some may ask, well, what's the difference between the two? When you look at a conscious home environment, you have all of the makings of the good home environment in many cases. There may be, give or take, some financial uh, need that may not be met. There may be two square meals a day versus three. There may not be as nice of a car in a conscious home environment as there is in the good home environment. The conscious home may not have as much square footage as the good home environment. But you can best believe one thing. The conscious home environment will contain many constants and variables that are missing and absent in the good home environment. When we talk about the mind of a child, and this goes back to the Bible, and it goes back to Proverbs, and it goes back to some of the symbolism and the the allegories that the Bible uses. You refer to the mind, you can look at the mind of a child as resembling, if you will, a garden. That mind is it's fresh, fertile soil that we as parents have been blessed by God to nurture. And a lot of times, I think we tend to forget being a parent, it is an honor. It is a gift that God has given us to be able to raise a child to be whatever that child can imagine. And we have total control over what that child is going to become. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not turn away from him. But think about that for just a moment. Train up a child in the way he should go, or in this case, he or she. And when he is old, he will not turn away from it. There's a very powerful reality in that scripture. When it says, train up a child in the way he should go, I draw your attention to in the way. In the way. It doesn't say according to the way. It doesn't say based on the way. But it says in the way. And I will submit to you that to be in something is to be immersed within it. To be surrounded by it. To operate within the confines or the parameters of that given thing. So when you train up a child in the way he should go, look to the home environment. Something that the child is immersed in, surrounded by, 
or operates within the confines thereof. A conscious home environment. The environment that imbibes spiritual principles and precepts, moral principles and precepts, as well as intellectual ones. These are the types of home environments that raise young men to be upright and upstanding, spiritually minded, intellectually gifted young men who go forth to be the best fathers they can don't look to go out and see how many women they can ravage, how many phone numbers they can get, and how much of a man they can be with their physical powers. These are young men who understand that as they grow and go forth into this world, what they demonstrate spiritually and intellectually as well as moral determines the manner of man that they become. This is what the conscious home environment teaches. This is what it involves. It understands that in the mind of each child, that mind is from a soul. And spiritually, intellectually, and morally, we are to impart seeds and plant seeds in the minds of these children. And as these children begin to grow, we teach or we nurture this garden. We nurture the seeds so that ultimately when they become adults, they, as well as we, reap the harvest of all that they've grown and all that they've become. Because when you do that, you become proud. Who's not proud when your child grows up to be something or someone that's upstanding? Once upon a time, there was an attempt to discipline our children, to teach our children, and to train our children. Training actually means repetition. To train something is different than to teach it. To teach it is to impart it, to instruct. To train it is to impart it and to teach that same thing over and over and over and over. So you eventually you have no choice but to get it right. And if you didn't get it right, eventually, you found yourself with one more chance to try and get it right. Because back in those days, parents didn't accept any less than the best that you could be. Because they understood it was their responsibility to train you in the way that you should go. And I'm sure everybody in this room can relate to that. When we talk about the conscious home environment, we talk about the value of self-image, we talk about the value of self-worth. And we also talk about the power of images. Images that are imparted upon the soul do tend to have an effect on a child. Whether it's a video game or whether it's an actual video that they're watching, images that we see are very powerful and they do impact the psyche. And you think about it, what would you come across that young man walking up the street with his pants? almost around his ankles. What is your first perception of his image? Or when you see a man coming up the other side of the street, perhaps dressed like me, or perhaps just in jeans and a nice polo shirt, walking up right there. What is our initial perception of his image? How many people are going to cross the street to the one who can't pull his pants up versus cross the street to walk on the side of the one who obviously can. Some people associate that with safety. Some people already have it in their minds that he is more than likely no good. And the sad part of that is he could very well be a straight A student. Gifted, talented, and knows. But he has not been taught the power in the perception of images. Not only the images that people perceive of him, but the power that lies in the images he projects. 